If you watched last week's video, you'll know that it was a pretty busy week at the Yachts for Sale YouTube channel. I signed up the exclusive listings on two yachts that are new to the Northrop & Johnson sales fleet. That's not all that's going on though. And this video will update you on some awesome news from the yachting industry and some amazing activity that's happening at Yachts for Sale HQ. Up until last week, if somebody had asked me to name a large trimaran motor yacht, I would have immediately thought of one of the amazing 53-meter silver-colored trimarans built by my friends at Latitude Yachts. However, whilst the rest of the yachting industry has been working away marketing themselves and their brands, Echo Yachts in Australia have been keeping their heads down building this incredible 84-meter trimaran superyacht the vessel is reported to be called White Rabbit Golf, and it bears a striking resemblance to the smaller 61-meter yacht, White Rabbit. Both yachts are designed by Sam Sorgiovanni, both built in Australia. There's no prizes for guessing it must be the same owner. There is so much about this yacht that is simply astonishing. Not only is she one of, if not the largest luxury trimaran yachts in the world, but she will be the largest super yacht ever to be built in Australia. Her propulsion is diesel electric using a combination of six separate Caterpillar engines and two 2,100 kilowatt electric motors with variable pitch propellers. Maybe the most astonishing thing about this particular yacht though is that she has been ordered with an equally customized support ship called Charlie that was launched last year and is already operative. Charlie comes complete with helideck, a hovercraft, a decompression chamber, and of course her own 12-meter catamaran. There can be no doubt that this is a yacht owner who knows exactly what it is that he wants, and will be using both White Rabbit Golf and Charlie very extensively indeed. So it only remains for me to wish whoever they are, and I have no doubt that they are regular viewers of my channel, the very best for many happy years of cruising. Now, another shipyard that has been flying below the radar in recent years is the Italian builder Cherry. They were bought fairly recently by the Gavio Group, who also own the Baglietto shipyard, and you may be interested to know if you're viewing this from the United States, they also own Bertram. Cherry have consistently produced some sporty looking performance yachts, such as Sea Look, Toby, and Muse. They never built anything much bigger than 102 foot in length though, until all of a sudden they announced the unexpected launch of this, a 164 foot, 5,000 horsepower aluminium super yacht. LC really is an amazing accomplishment for Cherry and has put them firmly on the map as super yacht builders. The yacht won the World Super Yacht Trophy in the category Revelation of the Year and rightly so. It's reported that the owner wanted a great amount of marble and onyx inside heavy materials, but also required a contractual top speed of 28 knots. Cherry's engineering department proved their worth by satisfying his requests and also returning a 30 knot top speed. No mean feat in a yacht of this size. With three engines powering water jets, the captain reportedly said it's like driving a huge jet ski. Now that, Sounds like a lot of fun. One of my favorite videos that I filmed last year was the Ferretti 960 My Su 2. Now, as the season passed last year, the owner enjoyed using this yacht so much that he turned down some pretty good offers in favor of using the yacht with his family. Now, though, the time has come for My Su 2 to meet her new owner and a whopping price drop of half a million euro has been authorized on her. Already this year, there have been a number of viewings by both brokers and clients on board, and everybody has come back with great feedback of her overall condition and maintenance. So Captain Omri and his lovely partner Aviv, along with the rest of the crew, are doing a wonderful job. Just a reminder of some of the outstanding features on board my Su-2. She has two sets of stabilizers, both gyro and fin a shore power converter for use in the United States, and she is one of the only yachts in her class that has a master stateroom on the main deck. 
but you can see the full video by clicking the link. Now the price reduction on my Su2 meant that I had to push the marketing of that yacht a little bit harder last week. And as you know, I also took on new listings of two new yachts that I also had to prepare the marketing for. At the same time, one of the yachts that I have for sale went to contract. Now, I can't disclose too many details about that just yet, but I will let you know if the sale goes ahead. At the same time, I was developing this, how to break in to yacht brokerage. I received so many comments on my videos, as well as messages on LinkedIn, sometimes on Facebook, sometimes emails, asking me how to become a yacht broker. And I totally understand that. It's a very exciting, very fascinating industry to be involved in, and it can be quite lucrative too when things do go well. Added to that, the barrier to entry of becoming a yacht broker is not particularly high. You don't need a university degree, you don't need any great academic qualifications to become a yacht broker, and yet it seems so very difficult just to get your feet on the first rungs of this industry. So I decided to produce a webinar called Breaking Into Yacht Brokerage. The image that you saw flash across your screens a moment ago is the cover of the ebook which will be a free giveaway for anybody that does attend that webinar. And the webinar itself will be full of really useful, practical, down-to-earth advice of what you need to do if you want to break into this industry. It's still a work in progress, but it's a work that's progressing very, very well. So I'm confident that I'll be able to publish that webinar on the last Friday of this month. The Monday prior to that, I'll be producing a promotional video to explain more about the webinar. Just one last thing that I really must mention is that with all the activity last week, I wasn't able to send out my monthly newsletter. And I want to be really honest here, it wasn't just that I was very busy. It was also because for some reason, MailChimp that I used to send out the newsletters bounced over 50% of the previous newsletters. And I just don't understand how that can be. One month it goes out fine, the next 50% of the email addresses bounce. So this week, something that I have uh, programmed to do is to find somebody who understands MailChimp and can help me to put that problem right. If you do subscribe to my newsletter, I apologize and I thank you for your patience. And if you don't, now's your opportunity to subscribe at the link below.